created us, who redeems us, and who sets us free. Amen. Well, good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers and mothers in the spirit as we remember those women who have raised us and, and have been a part of growing us into the faithful people that we're becoming. It is such a joy and privilege for me to be back with all of you in this beautiful place, celebrating with you today 200 years of faithful ministry here it is a delight for me to see your growth, growth that has taken place in, in so many ways, maybe uh, most especially right now in the successful completion of a capital funds campaign and in the fact, I love this about you, that what you have raised and your plan is not all about you. Yes, it's about this congregation, but it's about allowing you to continue the kind of ministry in education and in service to this community that has animated you for a long time. What a gift. What a gift you are to the community in the ways that you use the gifts God has given you. And then the ways God is continuing to lead and poke and prod you, to bring you more and more into deeper and deeper relationship with God's people here in this place. I'm so grateful to all of you for sharing the gifts that you have received with the diocese and your pledge to the diocese, a reminder that you're part of something bigger, 180 congregations in this diocese. It is a blessing for me to be here and to share all of this with you. And to share it in the name of Jesus who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Well, as children learn and memorize the Lord's Prayer, sometimes unexpected phrases come out of their mouths. I'm sure many of us have heard them, like the little girl that I heard praying, give us this day our jelly bread. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good idea. Or another child who prayed, forgive us our mattresses. <laughs> and of course, Harold be thy name. <laughs> and whole generations of children who grow up believing that Harold is God's name, because that's what the prayer says. Well, the Reverend Noel York Simmons, the rector of Christ Church in Old Town, Alexandria, she told about a child's prayer in her sermon at the conference at Shrinemont, the conference for clergy, spouses, and lay professionals that took place about 10 days ago. She told about an engaging four-year-old who prayed, our Father who art in heaven, That'll be my name. <laughs> That'll be my name. Well, I think, I think that girl was onto something, and something very, very important. There are many stories in scripture about people taking on a new name, receiving a new identity. Abram becomes Abraham, Sarai becomes Sarah, and Saul. We heard a bit about Saul in the first reading today. Saul, who righteously persecuted Christians, truly believing with all his mind and his heart that they were wrong and that they were perverting the true faith. And he not only stood by to see Stephen being stoned to death, but he actively rounded up Christians, and then he was changed, changed by an encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. He was changed, and he became known by a new name as a sign of that. He became known as Paul, 
A change in name in Holy Scripture signals a new way of being, a new set of relationships, a new identity and purpose. Naming or renaming someone is an act of power. Knowing someone's name and using their name gives us some power over them. If only the power to get them to stop what they're doing and turn their heads when we call their name out loud. Well, society around us tries to rename us, to give us new names. And society around us often does that with abusive power. It tries to give names that tear us down, that extinguish our passion, that squeeze the very life out of us. Too fat, too dumb, too smart for her own good, too emo, too poor too black, too white, too old, too young, too ugly. It's easy for us to believe those names, especially when we're young, especially when we feel vulnerable for whatever reason. And when we believe those names, we forget who we really are. And when we forget who we are, then we sometimes join in the naming. We get hooked into the renaming that's dividing us as a nation right now. Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal, feminist, chauvinist, immigrant, foreigner, and the list goes on. And all too often, those words are hurled as accusations, as dismissal of the other person's beautiful and complex humanity. Sometimes we even use scripture as the basis of our dismissing and accusing others. Jesus' powerful and life-giving words, as we heard in the gospel today, are sometimes used as ammunition. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, sometimes we might use those words abusively to set ourselves up as gatekeepers, to determine who's in, who's out, who's acceptable to God and who isn't. But we know, we know from the teachings of our Lord that gatekeeping of that kind is sin, meaning that it breaks relationships between us and God and between us and other people. After all, as we heard in the gospel reading last Sunday, there is just one gatekeeper, and it isn't us. There is just one gate, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the gate for the, she for the shepherd, for the sheepfold. I am the gate, Jesus said. So using Jesus' words to tear down and accuse others is sin because Jesus is the way, not us or any other path we choose to follow. Jesus is the truth, not our words about him, not our teachings about him, not even our beliefs about him. Jesus is the truth with a capital T. And Jesus is the life the giver of life in all its fullness, eternal life, eternal life which, we get, which begins not when we die, but the moment that we set out to walk the way of Jesus, the way that he walked before us. Jesus knows us. Jesus loves us. 
Jesus died for us and lives for us and calls us each by name. In fact, Jesus gives us a new name. All of us, all of us, across every divide that we create or imagine, Jesus gives us a new name. Jesus calls us beloved. Jesus calls us friends. Jesus calls us children, children of God. And because we are children of God, then we are all brothers and sisters, all of us in this vast human family. That'll be my name, the little girl prayed. That is our name, beloved, friend of Jesus, child of God. When we remember those names, we remember who we really are and whose we really are. The beloved of God who says to us, do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you by your own name. Come and follow me, I will give you life. I love you, you are mine. Amen.